The aircraft captured by the Iranians earlier this month is, in fact, one of America's most sophisticated spy planes. The president was asked about it today. Uh, we have asked for it back. We'll see how the Iranians respond. Hello everyone, this is Dan Dix from Press for Truth here with another weekly video report. As tensions are increasing in the Middle East and war drums are beating louder surrounding Iran, the propaganda wing of the global elite, the mainstream media, along with leaders in the West, are currently doing everything they can to convince you that Iran poses a threat. In fact, Stephen Harper has recently stated, be under no illusion. Iran is a very serious threat to international peace and security. In my judgment, it is the world's most serious threat to international peace and security. Meanwhile, Canada is one of the world's largest exporters of uranium, and the effects of depleted uranium on the health of people in the Middle East have been horrendous. Stephen Harper went on to say, this is a regime that wants to acquire nuclear weapons and has indicated some desire to actually use nuclear weapons. This statement comes despite the fact that there is absolutely zero proof that the Iranian government are currently in possession of a nuclear weapon. In order to have a clear understanding of what is taking place today in Iran, we need to look back and understand the history of the Americans and England's relations with Iran. Iran, 1953. The CIA mounted its first major covert operation to overthrow a foreign government. The target was the Prime Minister of Iran, Mohammad Mossadegh. He held power legitimately through his country's parliamentary process, and he was popular. Washington had once looked to him as the man to prevent a communist takeover. But that was before Mossadegh decided that the Iranian state, not British companies, ought to own and control the oil within Iran's own borders. When he nationalized the British-run oil fields, Washington saw red. The Secretary of State, John Foster Dulles, and his brother Allen, director of the CIA, decided with Eisenhower's approval to overthrow Mossadegh and reinstate the Shah of Iran. Crown Prince Abdullah greets the Shah as he lands at Baghdad airport after a seven hour flight from Rome. The King of Kings was back in control and more pliable than Mossadegh. American oil companies took over almost half of Iran's production. U.S. arms merchants moved in with 18 billion dollars of weapon sales over the next 20 years. But the weapons and flattery heaped by America on the Shah blinded us to the growing opposition of his own people. They rose up in 1979 against him. Death to the Shah, they shouted. Death to the American Satan. Let's not forget that the U.S. funded both sides of the Iraq-Iran war. And let it be known that Iran has never invaded or attacked anyone in the past 100 years. Not only did America have a hand in funding both sides of the war, but they also supplied weapons to the Iranian regime during the Iran-Contra affair. I did do it. I am not, as I said in my statement, at all ashamed of any of the things that I did. I was given a mission, and I tried to carry it out. The Iran-Contra hearings, convened in May 1987, by a special joint committee of the United States Congress to investigate the sale of U.S. weapons to Iran and the illegal diversion of money to the Contras. All our enemies knew it, and you wanted to conceal it from the United States Congress. We wanted to be able to deny a covert operation. You see, the global elite want a complete and total takeover of the Middle East. Just look at the amount of regime changes we've seen in just the past 10 years. So the fear-mongering about Iran having a nuclear weapon is an excuse to go in and implement a regime change. Just look at what happened with Iraq nearly nine years ago. Remember when we were told that Saddam Hussein was in possession of weapons of mass destruction? Well, we all soon found out that that was entirely untrue, yet the Iraqi regime had already been completely toppled. The Iraqi regime possesses biological, 
and chemical weapons. Weapons of mass destruction. Weapons of mass destruction. We cannot wait for the final proof. The smoking gun that could come in the form of a mushroom cloud. And we believe he has, in fact, reconstituted nuclear weapons. But on the specific issue of weapons of mass destruction, it's going to take time. I believe that uh, uh, we, we will find the truth. And the truth is, he, he, he was developing a, a program for weapons of mass destruction. The main reason we went into Iraq at the time was we thought he had weapons of mass destruction. It turns out he didn't, but he had the capacity to make weapons of mass destruction. But I also talked about the human suffering in Iraq. Uh, I like to tell people when hit the final history is written on Iran, Iraq, it'll look like just a comma. The Iranian nuclear issue is a problem and continues to be a problem that must be addressed by the international community. There should be no doubt the United States and the international community are determined to prevent Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons. The United States of America is willing, in the final analysis, if necessary, to take military action to keep Iran from having a nuclear weapon. There's a special case here with Iran, a country that is trying to get a nuclear weapon, and that is saying that it believes in wiping another country off the map. Iran continues its efforts to obtain nuclear weapons. A nuclear Iran would pose a direct threat to the Middle East and to the entire world. So now we have the nations of England, along with Israel and America, who want to invade and attack Iran. However, they know that a preemptive strike would not get the people behind their war of aggression. So some of the steps that are currently being taken are to harass and intimidate Iran in an effort to back them up into a corner so that they will be provoked to attack first. There are currently EU foreign ministers threatening to block oil exports which is already provoking the Iranians to respond by threatening to close down the Strait of Hormuz. Last month, we joined with our partners at the UN Security Council to pass the toughest and most comprehensive multilateral sanctions that the Iranian government has ever faced. The European Union is moving ahead with additional strong measures against Iran's financial, banking, insurance, transportation, and energy sectors, as well as Iran's Revolutionary Guard. Other countries, like Canada, have indicated they will also be taking action. In other words, we are ratcheting up the pressure on the Iranian government for its failure to meet its obligations. If their intimidation tactics fail and Iran does not go for the bait, we certainly could see a false flag attack, which would be blamed on Iran in order to provide the excuse for an invasion and a complete takeover by the global elite. Iran is by no means a shining beacon of light. They have their problems and their issues, just like just about any government in the world does. But the global elite are manipulating the situation with Iran in order to get the people in the West behind their war in the name of peace and security. So in the coming weeks and months, let's not get caught up in all the war propaganda similar to what we've seen in Iraq, and be sure to take what the mainstream media has to say about this with a grain of salt.